Wow, friends. Well, here we are today with another brand new video. Aren't you glad that you've tuned in? Mm-hmm. Look at this. Yes, this is uh, the scary pile in one of the rooms in my basement. This is what was left. Uh, you can watch all my moving videos and you'll get why we had a big old pile of stuff. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Use my code LFTABLE80 to get $80 off, including free shipping on your first box with purchase. Go to HelloFresh.com to redeem and for more details. Now on top of this was a whole lot of trash bags. We had to basically move ourselves with um very little notice because our movers fell through. Now you can see in the background through the uh, beams there, we also used a lot of boxes and those are nicely organized. Thank you, family team. But then we also had a lot of stuff we had to just throw into trash bags. You know how it goes when you're moving. That's how we always move growing up. And so on this pile, we had a bunch of trash bags with clothes that have already been processed. We had other odds and ends and toys and furniture and things. And so we've picked through it over the last several months while living here. And this is what is left. And it has been my goal to now go through what was left after, as I say, after we cherry picked everything. <laughs> um, been my goal to just go through it because obviously some of these things we don't need, they're not important. But then also, if you note the totes that are stacked, uh, kind of in the middle of the screen there to the left beside the fireplace. That's a lot of family memory totes, uh, different pictures and things. We also have boxes full of those, but there you go. That's just more. So those are obviously very important. Just going through, getting stuff up. Now what I'm doing, I, I work in layers. It just works well for me that way. I am going through and clothing that is left, I am putting in a huge pile at the bottom of our stairs. That's gonna go up for laundry. And so I want to make a new area on the other side of this one, where you see I have the keyboard, with other few little odd and end um, furniture pieces and such that we still need to process. So it helps me just to get stuff to the other side that we're keeping. And again, piles of clothing, especially some of these are winter clothing that I'm finding that maybe got spilled out of a bag. You know, we'll want those in the fall and winter. I'm also bagging up little odds and end toys that I have found that kids need to process. But I'm being helpful by <laughs> getting them in a bag for them. Uh, you know, empty Lego box, that needs to go. We have some basketballs that I need kids to get outside with all the play things. I see some pieces of a tent that needs to go with the tent. It's a lot and it took me several hours on this day to go through it, but I'm glad I did it. Some folks have suggested, and I appreciate the suggestion, definitely many things are gonna fall under this category to wait until winter to do the rest of the unpacking and that is definitely my goal. But this mess in particular, I thought, oh, this one I wanted because it was taken up almost a whole room. The basement is Glory of Glories, 2,200 square feet. I am just, again, forever grateful and excited of all the potential down here. Okay, so certainly mm, making some progress here. I feel like a Dr. Seuss book. The mess was so deep and so tall and so wide. I'm just gonna now sweep everything together. I have heavily picked through it. There's still good things in this pile and then there is trash in this pile. Only way I know to do it, any mess that gets out of control, do one layer pick through, then sweep, and see where we can go from there. But this was taken up, you know, one of the room areas. And the fireplace behind me, we're getting ready to have chimney repair work done and a brand new wood stove installed in the basement with the idea that heat will rise and heat the whole upstairs as well. It's 4,200 square feet total to heat. At our farmhouse, we had a fireplace in the downstairs and that did heat the whole upstairs for us. And that house was about 2,500 square feet. So as I like to do when I'm cleaning, I get one of my videos going. I actually rewatched my whole moving series <laughs> while I cleaned. It helped me remember how did things get this way?
Okay, finally, finally. We've worked about an hour and a half. I've got to go cook something up, so not doing any more down here for tonight, but we are going to be back at this layer tomorrow. So now I am taking some time to get my kitchen all cleaned up and ready to do some cooking with HelloFresh. Before that, I am making my homemade vinegar spray. Had three empty bottles that needed to be refilled, and it is just usually one-fourth or one-fifth part vinegar and the rest water. And it's a simple, natural cleaner that even the kids can use. It does get things like if you have built-up calcium with hard water and such. I had to use it a bunch at the farmhouse for that. It does great. Not so much rust spots. Here is the delicious meal that I am making with HelloFresh. I am going to follow the simple directions that are listed on the back. I always like for someone else to tell me what to do. Now, whenever I cook up HelloFresh for our large family, I organize all the bags and all the ingredients together. Just a little, little fun mom organization. Step one, prep, adjust rack in the top position and preheat the oven to 425, so that's going on. Then bring a large pot of salted water to boil. So I'm gonna get my water going. We'll wash and dry all the produce. Gonna dice the tomatoes, pick the basil from the stems and roughly chop the basil. So let me, let me get my pot going. Getting all my tomatoes ready. We're gonna make a fantastic sauce with this. The kids absolutely love it and gobbled it up. They were so excited. We love chicken, we love garlic noodles. Uh, so this was a perfect new recipe. And friends, just wait until you see me tackle the rest of the messes in my basement, including moving out all the furniture and other stuff that needs to go to the thrift store. There's something for everyone, including low-calorie, vegetarian, and family-friendly recipes every week. HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning and prepping, so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes, or even 20 minutes with their quick and easy options. Thank you again to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Use my code LFTABLE80 to get a total of $80 off, including free shipping on your first box with purchase. Go to HelloFresh.com to redeem, and for more details, click the first link in the description below. I will say, as much as I have tried to extend the life of our uh, 1960s original push-button stove, I do think after it being J. Morel stove top for four months is coming towards the end of its lifespan. Several little adventures have gone down and uh, just think things are coming to the end. So I need to cycle back around to, yeah, just researching stove tops. I wanted to get a coil top stove for canning. Several of you told me that you do canning on a glass top stove. And then I remembered, yes, back at the farmhouse when I did canning, I had a, a smooth top stove as well. I also have my Facebook Marketplace used stove in the garage. I need to get that chicken cooking. Okay, okay, focus, Jammer. So thanks for listening all about my stove top. We will get it figured out. And if you wanna leave me in the comments below your stove top recommendations uh, that I could safely can on, and it might just be another glass top. As I said, in the farmhouse, I know I did that. And so right here, I am just getting my chicken cutlets cooking in some oil on the stove top, just browning them about two minutes or so. Get both sides brown. They bake up gorgeous. Cannot wait for you to see this meal as it's coming out of the oven. And in the bowls, makes me hungry again, just watching it. And now I'm gonna start working on the yummy sauce that's gonna go over the top. Super good, so it was those tomatoes I chopped, it was the rest of the Italian seasoning, it's some balsamic vinegar. They also had me add in for, because I'm making enough for 10 with this, they had me add in, I think it was a fourth of a teaspoon of sugar. Very good though, there's our sauce a going, some of the butter, mm-hmm, hallelujah, bless this mess, you know it. Easily change your delivery days or food preferences and skip a week whenever you need. Okay, so here is our yummy chicken over the garlic and herb pasta, so good. Liam, can you start handing these out for me? So different kids are coming in, getting washed up, getting ready to eat, and uh, Gabriel came in and he said, hello fresh, they always have fancy food. 
So this is our fancy food treat. This is really good. I'm so glad. So have kids washing their hands, but mama's got to mm -hmm. eat. So busy, I did busy day. You did, yes. And I got an egg. Okay, friends, I am back. It's been a few days, actually, since I've been able to circle back to work on my basement pile over there, but boy, I can't wait to show you. I mean, I, I know you saw it just a few seconds ago in the video, but in real time, it's been like three or four days since I could return back to this project. It feels like a breath of fresh air, even looking at that, because there's not, there's really not that much left. We did a lot the other day. Another thing I want to show you is, we all know there is a shortage of freezers nationwide, here in the US at least. What I've heard is a lot of the, the manufacturers of the freezers, what does that say? Okay, interesting. A note on, see, stick with me here, you could do this. In a recent video, I had kid footprints on the ceiling and I was wondering how that happened. Now I'm seeing a note on a board on the basement ceiling, but it's marking what that wire is. I'm gonna show you so you don't think I'm nuts, okay. See way up yonder, there's some writing cable for the hall. Okay, whatever, whatever. Focus, focus here. Back to the freezer shortage. I have several refrigerators that I've collected. I've told my tale in a recent Q&A. Jim Merrill, how did you get so many refrigerators and freezers? A lot of my refrigerators are just, you know, I'm old. I've been married almost 22 years. This is our fourth home. Uh, we've just accumulated. Like, I still have the refrigerator from our first house over 20 years ago. Things just still trucking. <laughs> okay, so... All that to say, I also have two freezers. We have meat birds we're getting ready to process, turkeys, you know, more animal things coming up, and I do a lot of freezer meals, and also I do a lot of food things on the internet, if you haven't noticed, and so that means I have to do a lot of food storage for my family and for my my work, because whenever I'm creating recipes, when I'm doing pictures of recipes, when I'm doing recipes for my membership, just I manage a lot of food. Okay, okay. So I thought the other night, I really need a third freezer. Right in the middle of a nationwide freezer shortage. And part of that is because lots of folks have realized the importance of having a freezer full of food. Uh, it can get you through a month. It could get you through a couple months. Months depends on what you have in there. Being in a pandemic, lots of folks have ordered a cow, a side of beef or a fourth of a cow or a whole hog to be delivered this fall. Um, and then manufacturers have stopped, at least what they told me at Lowe's the other night when I went in, they said manufacturers have stopped making freezers during this time. They said, we can take your money for a freezer lady, but we can't even give you an ETA. I mean, we could take your money and it'd be six months or more before you get your freezer. So Lowe's was a dead end. Now at Lowe's I got this idea though because they had told me they were getting in nine five cubic feet freezers. The following day they said five of them are already sold and I thought, well, I wonder if I could get a few smaller freezers since I do have all this, you know, I've got 2,200 square feet in this glorious basement, I could put a couple small freezers in here for a season. It's not at all what I would want, but I decided to go to Home Depot, see what they had. Uh, same sad story there, except they had just unloaded three seven cubic feet chest freezers. Now my big freezers upstairs are 20 cubic feet. Mm-hmm, whole lot a lot of. So real quick in my mind, it was like mind mapping taking place. I was like, oh, I can multiply seven times three. If I get all three of these freezers, that equals 21 cubic feet of freezer storage, and they will take up about as much room as one massive chest freezer. In a perfect world, I would not want a chest freezer or three small chest freezers. I like my upright freezers because I can open the door, can line them up with my refrigerators. I feel like I can organize them well. You know, beggars can't be choosers or can't be picky, whatever the saying goes. I am thankful. What I'm about to show you is I did, I got all three seven cubic foot chest freezers, 21 cubic feet. Quick Google search because I was wondering, um, It'll be well over 100 meat birds. I got some different meat bird math going on right now. And turkeys. A lot of that meat I will probably break down further when I bought the organic bundle of the 20 pasture-raised birds from J&L Green Farm. Here fairly locally, 
those 20 birds took up at least, I feel like at least two shelves in my upright freezer, but they weren't broken down. It was like a bird shrink wrapped in a bundle and I couldn't get anything else on top of it. So I'm thinking if I break my birds down farther. So I did um, a little Googling the other day. I Googled how many pounds of meat can you store in a seven cubic feet chest freezer? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna read you my Google. How much meat can you fit in a seven cubic feet chest freezer? From homesteading today, a rule of thumb is one cubic foot of freezer space for each 35 to 40 pounds of cut and wrap meat. Allow slightly more space when the meat is packaged in odd shapes. So maybe I can hold over 2,800 pounds of meat. Yeah, <laughs> I know my math on my meat birds alone, raising the ones I have and the ones that are coming, I believe will be close to 500 pounds. My turkey jokers are probably 100 or so pounds. I could be off, we're gonna find out on butchering day. And then I have some other poultry also that could be butchered. Um, but definitely my jumbo Cornish cross and my turkeys are going this summer. I promise I'll give you another homesteading meat bird update video. But in this um, unpacking, organizing my basement, and cooking a bunch of food video, I gotta give you freezer updates. So that's where I'm trying to get at. But I know the question will come about how much meat I think I'm going to be putting up. I think it's safe to say close to the 600 pound mark is my estimate for this summer. I'm pretty sure I can fit most of that in one of my upright freezers upstairs. Again, because of the food I spin and the recipes I develop, the freezer meals, and just like when I'm filming this video, here in two weeks. One of my very, very best friends. Been my good friend since I was 14, and our grown kids are married. So there you go, that's good friends for you. Anyway, she has a missions trip coming up, and so I am helping her plan and cook up a fundraiser. She's done car washes and all kinds of fundraisers. We're going to vlog this. She's gonna be in the video. You're gonna hear about she's going to work in five orphanages in Haiti this summer. All that to say, we are cooking up a probably 50 or more nine by 13 casseroles that she is selling for the fundraiser. Families are getting the casseroles, they're getting rolls, they're getting fruit salad, and they're getting cookies. We're gonna make it, prep it all here. All that to say, you know me, I always need room for food, okay. Without further ado, here's my three new freezers, and then we're going to get back to my pile. So this is the brand. Um, I would have taken anything that they had. I got the three that they had, so together 21 cubic square feet. I feel like when they're all unpackaged, they'll probably take up the room of a big chest freezer. So in theory, these freezers could hold about 735 pounds of meat if I just put meat in them. Um, these were a little over $200 a piece. I think my total, including tax and everything, was seven something. All that to say, $700 is in the, is in the price range of what I paid for my 20 cubic foot freezers that I currently have. So basically I get the same space and I paid the same amount, but I had to do it in kind of a riggy way. Now when the world opens back up, and I don't know, you're able to do normal things like go into Lowe's and get yourself a freezer when you need it, and it just comes a week later and it's no big deal. I was thinking at some point, space-wise, I might donate these. There's probably food banks and shelters and other places I could donate these freezers to if I wanted to, uh, in a more convenient time, just replace them with one single upright freezer. But right now I need these because I, I got me to come in and projects coming up and spinning food for you. So there you go, these are gonna go in my basement. Okay, so now that I'm done with my little uh, fr new freezer dissertation there, here is what is left. I am so excited that this is all that's left because let's do this now. But wait, there's more. <laughs> we are getting ready to start the project of having our, uh, our chimney repair. We actually have three chimneys and we have three fireplaces, but we are gonna have a brand new wood stove installed down here in the basement with the plan being that this wood stove going, the heat will rise. It'll heat the whole upstairs of our house. Total again, it's about 4,200 square feet. 2,200 of that is downstairs. Um, and we're putting a door here on our feed room and we'll be putting a door over on our food storage room. But super excited and another reason why I've got to work on this basement here to get ready for workers to come in and 
get us a wood stove going there. So I found my flagpoles with my winter flags. That shows when we moved and we just took the flagpoles down. I will put those flagpoles. I'm excited to put one up on the chicken coop and some other places around our farmyard area. Found my American map for the kids. We got to get that all all stretched out. Uh, got someone's ukulele that's missing a few strings and some DVD cases. That pillow that needs to go in the wash. You can see we are just down to like bare bones here of this messy pile. So I am picking out the, the last of the good things that I can. And then a bunch of this will be trash. There we go. We got a broken Lego case. I did find my wreath holder. So I can put a wreath on the door when I want to. We got moved in about three weeks before the world went crazy. So yeah, we've been here five months now. Like all of life, you know, I work in layers with this as I've already mentioned, but I just know slowly we will continue to get things unpacked, get things where they should be. But this is the last of my like hovel, <laughs> hovel collection. There you go, so I just found a collection of wires for Travis. And then forever, I am almost 20 years in of picking up all the Lego pieces. Legos are too expensive to, to not pick up, so I, I pick them up. Here we are now on the other side of the basement. Okay, so I am standing, <laughs> I am standing in the area. I feel like, uh, what's the movie Elf where he's singing? Okay, I'm singing and I'm standing in this area that was just deep and wide and full and moving residue. <sighs> I'm standing in it, it's empty. I'll show you the floor in a minute. I have this stack of stuff, there's pictures here, there's an air fryer, that little Noah's Ark box, little family history. Whenever I found it, I was pregnant with Jaden. I went to a Christian bookstore and I was just looking for like little nursery things and I bought this three stack of boxes. That was the smallest one. I don't know where the other two are, but this is one of my special like mama heart things, right? So here we are, here we are. You all have watched it. It was full. It was full, it was full. I was cleaning stuff off the floor there. It was full and it's not, I just can't say that enough. <laughs> um, so then this is the keeper stack of stuff. And then there's a few things on the other side I've already pushed through. So um, again, we're getting ready for contractors and stuff to come through and start working on that fireplace. Getting some organization left. Um, and then we have, you know, boxes here still to unpack. So. Goal is, I'm gonna get that stuff in here, just try to get stuff, well, in here. In here and kind of some sense. I mean, there's other rooms and stuff here in this basement, but there and then in here, because we need to get this set up for my homestead food storage room, all this stuff here needs, it needs out. It needs to come on out. Um, some of this stuff is gonna be thrift store stuff. Some of it, needs to go upstairs. Um, I've got pictures and mirrors and things, a tent. All of these were little indoor shutters on the windows. I'm probably going to pass those on to the thrift store. This stuff just needs out of here. So this is my next layer is kind of rolling through, 
what, what we're keeping, what's going, and what we are keeping for the time being will go over there to be processed. Okay, so now, um, if you look at the boxes, the boxes on the right, kind of right behind me, those, a lot of those are kid items still that need to be gone through, things for bedrooms and such. They're just gonna wait till winter. Um, and then the boxes on the right side, a lot of those, I bet two thirds of that is our library collection. And then I probably have about five or so business boxes and my like I don't know where all my shoes are <laughs> I have two pairs of farm shoes I've bought I have a pair of black sandals my quote going out shoes that also have mud on them um, but I, I think I still have a box or two of um, my personal belongings there that I will get to at some point and so now I'm just going through the items that are on the other side I'm just carrying them over Travis and I were down here the other day talking about future plans and what we could do with this basement. We're not sure yet. I know lots of people have asked. So we have four bedrooms and two baths. Everything is down here for a large, full third bath. We also don't know futuristically, you know, are we adopting more kids? Are we having more kids the old fashioned way? Lots of different options in life. You know, it is 2,200 square feet of hopes and dreams down here. So there's lots of things that we could do. Also finding things, um, I really want to decorate upstairs. Here's some pretty birds in a tree. I'm gonna wipe these off. I have a stack of pictures and things upstairs and still have not got the stained glass windows hung, working on all the things, but those things are coming up. I'm trying to, in the month of July, just finish as much as possible. I want to get the outside of the house, you know, done for now, and I want to get as much of our other things processed. There's still gonna be stuff behind me. A lot of you had a lot of good ideas that a lot of these like library boxes and other things can wait until winter and that's exactly what I plan to do. But things like wall decorations, I'm processing that. So it doesn't sound like I'm saying we're getting a lot done in July, but we really are. Finally went the other night and ordered the living room couch. Super exciting, it's a uh, holiday weekend and all that, there were some good sales. And so I thought it's time for a couch. Mm -hmm. And also in thinking through things I want done before we start our new load of homeschool stuff, I want the couch and living room stuff set up. I want the stuff in the wall. I want the stained glass windows hung up. I want the outside of the house hung up. And pretty much my joke is once we're done with the house projects we're kind of returning it to because animal project wise I feel like we're coming I know it's never truly the end of the animal and homesteading projects but I feel like a lot of that is settled uh, chicken run is now done more videos with tours and stuff will be coming up there's a few more things I want to do but it's not gonna be like bam 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 you know six or eight weeks solid of homesteading projects they're intermixed so that's where back to the house stuff. Let's get this stuff on the wall. Let's get some organization here because real soon my garden stuff is going to be plowing through and again processing that poultry. So I need my food storage room. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay, okay. Continue. Continue, Jay Morrell. Continue. Liam's helping me with some things. He carried all of those interior shutters to that stack and I just know some of you are gonna write me and say, Jamerelle, I'm looking for those and I'm sorry by the time this is out, I've probably either given them to a friend or given them to the thrift store. Um, I really 
try not to hold on to stuff I'm not gonna use or I don't have plans for using. I got this at Lowe's at the forest house, but it's still appropriate for this house. Again, this is how I do so many things in life. I have to go in layers. Like, we've gotten so many layers done. Now we're to this layer. And we've been here, how many months? It's February, March, April, May, June. So we're four months in, yay. For Jaden's graduation, moms with graduating kids, uh, I had all kinds of things printed up. We did a display table. Anyway, here was his little, his little poster for memory's sake of all his, kind of like a preview of all his homeschool years. Yay! Okay, so now Liam is doing the sweep out in the food storage room, and I'll show you what we got left for our winter project. So there you go. Everything over here. It it doesn't look like that much more, so I'm glad. Uh, again, pictures, family pictures, and we've got to get these freezers set up, and I really, I just might set them up right there. But this is the last of the stuff in the basement that needs to be unpacked and processed, and I feel like here looking at it now it's really not that much so i'm excited four months later progress yay thank you again to hellofresh for sponsoring today's video use my code lftable80 to get a total of 80 dollars off including free shipping on your first box with purchase go to hellofresh.com to redeem and for more details click the first link in the description below